Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. We read in Proverbs 31.10. As we read the verses that follow, our question may become, who can be a virtuous woman? The virtuous woman is found at the end of Proverbs and is the climax of living the principles found in this book dedicated to wisdom. Many have claimed it is impossible to do all the things found in this passage and therefore impossible to be a virtuous woman. However, this idea comes because of a lack of understanding of the focus of the passage. In order to understand this passage, we must look at the definition of the word virtue. The dictionary defines it as... Behavior showing high moral standards, a quality considered morally good or desirable in a person. The Hebrew word for virtue is used over 200 times in the Bible to refer to an army of men or men of war. It has the idea of strength of heart, mind, and body. The focus of this passage is not about this woman's actions, but her strength of heart, mind, and body, her virtue. This is what motivates her actions. In order to be a virtuous woman, we don't have to duplicate her actions. We have to mirror her heart, her seat of virtue. This makes becoming a virtuous woman both easier and harder. We don't have to we don't have a list to check off, plant an orchard, learn a skill, learn to sew, start a business, etc. And we may never do the exact same things that this woman does, but we can learn to think things through, be strong and be diligent, and show that through the talents and abilities with which God has blessed us. We want to take a few minutes to discuss some of the highlights of this virtuous woman. She is extremely busy. Not much gets past her watchful gaze. She sees new opportunities when she considers a field and perceives her merchandise is good, verses 16 and 18. She is also looking for ways to use her skill to help her household for the what we read. She looketh well to the ways of her household, verse 27. She knows her the goings and comings of those who God has placed in her care. She watches carefully to see that all of her needs are met. Uh, they need, they have the clothing they need, verse 21. They have the food they need, verse 15. Their physical needs are met by, but so are their other needs. safely trust in her because he knows she will do him good. We find that in verses 11 and 12. She is there for those closest to her, listening to them and speaking to them in love. They trust her because when she opens her mouth, it isn't to 
tear them down or spread their secrets as the latest gossip. We read in verse 26, she opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Most of Proverbs speaks of the tongue and in the New Testament. James tells believers how small the tongue is, yet how powerful it can be. He says it kindles a great fire and is difficult to control. Find that James 3, 5 through 10. He encourages believers not to curse others and tear them down, but to use their words wisely, and that is exactly what we see the virtuous woman do. She speaks wisely and gently, not cruelly or hurtfully. These things, along with a few others, are the reasons are the reason when we look at those closest to her, we find she is a blessing to them. We find this woman's children bless her and her husband praises her in verses twenty eight through twenty nine. She goes above and beyond to care for her loved ones and this truly blesses them. Her husband is able to be a respected man in the gates where the judges and elders sit, in verse 23. This is because she has built him up and brought him honor and not shame. As we read in Proverbs 12, 4, a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. Her loved ones consider themselves blessed of God, and truly they are because she is there in their lives. How is she able to do and be so much? Why has she done these things and chosen to be this way? We can find the answer sprinkled throughout this passage. We learn in verses 30, 31, a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and her own works. Praise her in the gates. She knows one day she will stand before her maker, the almighty God, and give account for her work. <coughs> this knowledge motivates her to use every second of every day to the fullest, to use her God-given talents and abilities, to redeem the time, as Paul encourages in Ephesians 5, 16 through 17, <coughs> She orders her steps and numbers her days, as the psalmist did in Psalms 90:12. We see this as she rises before dawn to prepare the daily meal and chore list, verse 15, and keeps her candle burning into the night to continue her work, in verse 18. She does not waste a moment on the bread of idleness, verse 27, and on that great judgment day she will rejoice before her maker, verse 25, as he says, Well done, my good and faithful servant. All because she chose to fear the Lord, redeem the time, and live a life of wisdom. As we conclude, let us ask ourselves, can I be a virtuous woman? How am I living? Do I truly fear the Lord? Do I work hard, diligently, willfully, and joyfully? Do I look for new opportunities to serve him with the talents and abilities with which he has blessed me? Do I watch carefully those with which he has entrusted to my care? Have I learned to control my tongue and speak with wisdom and kindness? Am I a blessing to those closest to me, including my Lord and Savior? Am I using the time he has given me wisely and to its fullest? And if not, why? Self-serving women are a dime a dozen. Average Christian women are rare, but a virtuous woman, she is more valuable than the greatest earthly treasure. And one day she will stand on the other side of the judgment with her rewards and praise from her maker, and she will rejoice.